I do specialize um, in my financial planning practice, which is what I do for a living, in working with small business owners. And I also have a small business background. My family owns a cattle operation in Nebraska. And because of that experience and what I do for a living now, it's really made me understand that we're so busy sometimes caught up in the day-to-day of running our small businesses that sometimes we overlook a few key things that we could tweak about our operations that would really help us uh, make more money, uh, work fewer hours, and have a lot less stress, and possibly even uh, retire on time and have a really successful and happy retirement. So I think every day when I get up in the morning and I look at Clay and how hard he works and how dedicated he is to his profession, I think, you know, if I didn't do what I do for a living, I would have to find somebody that does that would help him set up all of his um, benefits because he would have nothing as a self-employed business owner. And we would have so many questions about taxes and financial planning and different types of insurance that we should own. And so our hope is that um, we can bring some of that information to people who are really in the trenches right now in their careers and their jobs and just bring some key pieces of info that if they were aware of them and they could make a couple small changes might really help them down the road a lot. So now this is a topic that you're going to be bringing to the convention, uh, the NCHA convention. What are the, um, the, some of the key takeaways that they'll be able to learn? Right, so key takeaways that we want people to walk away with are number one, um, some tax pitfalls, so maybe some things that you're doing that you could be aware of and maybe some things um, that could help you avoid um, some pitfalls down the road, and we see that all the time. Um, also some pieces about insurance, I get a lot of questions about that, and specifically types of equine insurance, liability, uh, care, custody, and control, so um, what, what can you be liable for when horses are on your place or you're hauling them to shows? And then a lot of people tell me, you know, I wish I would have known in my 30s and 40s what I know now in my 50s and 60s and that I would have paid a lot more attention to saving some of my winnings or um, being, being more careful about the money that I was making when I was making it so that when I'm 60 or 50, I don't have to be doing this every day for a living if I don't have to be. Um, so those are some of the key topics that we're going to talk about at the convention and we just really want to get people's feedback um, if that's something they're interested in and some of those topics we'd like to develop further at a later date um, if people, enough people are interested in it. Okay, one of the key things, I guess the basic things that people in business need to do is to have a business plan. And a lot of the people, a lot of horse people, cowboys in general, um, wouldn't have a clue about a business plan. So what, true. what is involved with a business plan and what difference could it make to their enterprise, even if it is training horses? Why is it important? I think there's two really easy answers to that question, and it's a great question. So number one, I think this is important to a lot of people, having a clear business plan can literally uh, mean the difference between you getting financing for that horse place that you've been wanting to buy and not getting it. There's very few people that are going to loan you money, a million dollars, to go buy a place if you can't clearly express to them how your uh, business is invoicing, how much they're invoicing, and what your cash flow is. And those are all elements of a business plan, and it doesn't need to be scary. I do a lot of business plans for people. Um, they don't need to be extremely long documents, but they do need to clearly articulate uh, what it is that you're doing in your business. The second answer to that question is having a clear business plan can be really helpful in the day-to-day -day, uh, running of your cutting horse business or any type of equine business. It helps to identify what types of clients you would like to have um, as a professional and um, really helps you tailor that. You can oftentimes find that once you define what type of clients that you want, it takes a lot of stress off of you. Um, you get better match um, in the types of clients that you get, and they're a lot happier, maybe less turnover. And so that's, I think, a really key element in just identifying in your business plan, who am I? What am I good at? Do I like to teach amateurs? Do I like to just show at aged events? 
and what, what part of that market can I really occupy and be really, really fantastic at it. This could seem extremely overwhelming to people who, you know, spent their life training horses or working with horses and they think, uh, it's just too much, I want to put the blinkers on, uh, I've survived this long, you know, I can continue this way. Right. Um, is, it, is it as overwhelming as they think it is? Well, I completely understand the overwhelming part. Um, you know, I, I watch Clay like run off to horse shows every three weeks. I don't travel with him, um, obviously, because of my job as much as, as I could be. Um, but when you're traveling that much, there's so many things to be thinking about. You're always unpacking and repacking and booking stalls and paying entries and talking to clients and going to the vet. And in the minutiae of all that, you have to pay your, your bills and you have to send your invoices and figure out what should be on those invoices. And, um, oh yeah, by the way, just basically run your normal life and maybe find time to call your mom and dad or have a birthday party for your kids. So um, the overwhelming part really is a fact of life. So I always tell my clients um, and the people that um, I work with, this is not something that I want you to get up and worry about every day, but if you allow a professional to worry about it for you and you'll at least address it once or twice a year, you'll be amazed at the results. And so that can apply to your insurance agent, it could apply to your accountant or your financial planner. But if you'll identify some key elements um, that could help you, which those professionals will assist you in doing, then you'll be amazed um, at the stress level that it can take off of your shoulders.